All right. Half your age. Also half my intelligence. I think that's the wrong way around, but it's fine. That's okay. There's a lot of, I think a lot of that math needs some work. We're just guessing at this point. I'm, I'm, you know what? We got shit on the moon with guesses. There we go. We're just op- offering helpful advice. We're not telling you how to do anything. To fucking help me. <laughs> Fuck you and your job. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 201 of the CanCast. Holy shit, we have surpassed 200. Yes, we have, despite our best efforts. That number feels weird. (sighs) It does, doesn't it? It's like when your odometer clocks over 200,000 miles. Like, it just looks weird. It really does. Uh, Anyway, uh, I am Mike, dear leader, doc taste, leader of men, herder of cats, maker of the buffalo chicken nacho. Good God, they are amazing. It's fairly simple, straightforward. One of these days I'll get the cooking YouTube going. Mm. Just stunt on all you people for less than 20 bucks. I mean, we should just do that as part of the cam shenanigans thing. We might as well. Whatever. <laughs> we can have our own weird little, like, chopped thing. I, Me versus Scotty versus whoever the hell else cooks. I cook. Okay, there we go. Yeah. We need a fourth and a panel of judges and a host. I'll be the panel of judges. Okay. You'll be all the judges. I'll be all the judges. Amazing. Feed me. I feel like this is going to get very um, biased very quickly. If you feed me good food, I have no reason to dislike you. Uh, He has no reason to dislike you if you feed him well. It is. You're mine. (laughs) Or, oh, God. I'm just. I've been up since, like, five. I yelled at my neighbor over the weekend at 3.30 in the fucking morning because he had to just get into his trailer. Just had to. Had to. And I told him people are trying to sleep, and he said, come down here and say that. So, I came down there, and guess who wasn't there to hear me say that shit? Wow. Yeah. How about that? (laughs) I wasn't fucking having it, man. (laughs) God, anyway. Sounds like your neighbor's scared of you. (laughs) He should be. Anyway, he's pointing out the obvious. He is your mind, our Uncle Radical, the professor of the ghetto arts, tenured, but not licensed. Some people call him Daddy Rads. We call him Scoots. Some people just call me Daddy. Oh, boy. I'm not touching that. Dave Raleigh. <laughs> Salute. There we go. Uh, he ain't touching that or many other things. There's he a was, lot of things he can't touch. He was gargling Mike's hard lemonade earlier. <laughs> Sound like you're choking on Mike's Hard Lemonade now. He's the chairman of the boards, <laughs> Colonel Eddie Dean himself, Zach Lords. Present. There you go. <laughs> Attaboy. Hey Dave, don't kink shame me. Uh, anyway. I'm not kink shaming, baby. Go ahead and subscribe to this podcast wherever we get your podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play. Like, rate, review, subscribe. Share with your friends. Just go into a school and lock the kids in a room and blare this. Summer school, they deserve this. Wow. <laughs> Are we a punishment in, in uh God that soundboard's a little hot. Turn well, that down here. There let, you go. I, I already told you what's a little hot in here. Yeah, well <laughs> their concrete's really kind of shit uh, for keeping like I wasn't saying the air. Oh, well then. <laughs> anyway. Stop it, you. <laughs> We're at Cam Automag on all the social medias. Go ahead and give us a follow. If you're uh, following us as we record this on uh, Monday, June seventeenth, you will see in our story picture of the nachos they were very good i took time to photoshop that oh did you yeah i got i got photoshop express and uh lightroom cz on my phone jesus Ooh, that looks fucking bougie as fuck dude right yeah that's what i do mm. that's good shit anyway uh this is going to be showing up on uh in the cam super secret shanigan page okay that's amazing no, no, that's not what I was looking at. No, no. it wasn't. You got to hold it. We saw it. We saw it. You got to hold it. Yeah, there you go. You're yeah. good. Okay. Sorry. Thank, thank you. Anyway. It was an ad, by the way. Yeah. Thanks. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. I don't want what you're selling. Pedal your wares elsewhere, Gypsy. <laughs> uh, coming soon to the Cam Super Secret Shanigan's Facebook page, my cooking tips. And the only way you can see those is if you support us on Patreon. Yeah, that's it. Patreon.com slash Cam Automag. You can subscribe for any dollar amount. One dollar all the way up to fifteen k. Yep, as we found out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the real winning number, the bang for your buck, is five dollars a month. Yep, that gets you access to the Cam Shenanigans page, which is where we do all of our crazy, colorful shit posting. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and uh, you also get bonus content. Yep. As well as early release oh, content. Yes. So you could be hearing our Thursday episode on Wednesday or even Tuesday. Yep. It all feels uh, all depends on, on how spry I am. Exactly. And if you subscribe at or above the $5 level, you put us that much closer to me being able to live stream this to Cam Shenanigans on Mondays. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I've been wanting to try and bring to you guys. So definitely give us that support. Help us out. Yep. Patreon.com slash Cam <laughs> That's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. It has been a week since we celebrated episode 200. It Indeed. Has been. What has everybody been up to? I was nursing the hangover. All right. It really wasn't. No. So you got a hangover from that? No. It was a pretty mellow evening. Uh, it was. Yeah. It was a really mellow evening. I was it was like, very nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was way better than Sundays. Yeah, it was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you guys had a great time. I unfortunately missed it. It was a uh, fucking shit show. It's a Sunday's ladies' okay. night for me. So. Hey, man. It's perfectly fine. But how, what do you guys did to do this that time? What? <laughs> what did we do over wow. the weekend? <laughs> this is what you're asking? I need more alcohol. Okay, well, you go, you go do that. I'm going to go ahead and just... Uh, So uh, Saturday and Sunday mornings, I was out at UMC for uh, NASA Utah. Oh, yeah. You got a lot of good photos and I got, videos. I got plenty of good photos. Fo- I didn't shoot nearly as much as I uh, thought I was going to, mm-hmm. but, you know, still got plenty. That's great. Uh, rip Scotty's motor. Yeah, I'm really bummed about that. I, I hope he just slams another M50 in it with S52 cams and just runs it for the rest of the season. I think that's probably the best bet. I mean, as... Scotty and I have hashed out the details on an LS swap before in that car, and it's doable. I just don't feel like it's doable. It's going to bump him out of class. It's going to bump him out of class. It's not doable within a feasible budget, and it's going to kill the rest of his season. Yeah. And I don't want any of those to happen. Yeah, because right now we are six weeks to mm-hmm. uh, the yeah to the next round and the six-hour Enduro, which, um, <clears throat> yeah, go, go ahead and come on out. First weekend of August. Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. It's a regular NASA weekend, but from 6 to midnight on Saturday, we have the uh, six-hour endurance race. It mm-hmm. is awesome. I highly encourage people to come out, uh, enjoy the race. That place takes on a totally different vibe at night. And around 10 o'clock, uh, the Tooele County Fair goes on, and they shoot off fireworks. Oh, even better. Yeah, so if you get a if you get a spot down in uh, Witchcraft Turn, you get to see the cars just flying through there. Mm-hmm. And all you got to do is turn around, look up towards the top of the attitudes, fireworks. Beautiful. Yep. That's a wonderful thing. Oh, yes. Yes, everybody should do that. Yeah, and it's it's free to come out and watch. So. Yeah, that's the thing. UMC has made it so that spectators can just chill up yeah. and have a great time. Yep. And uh, definitely support them by, you know, buying things from them. Yes. For that. Concessions, etc. Oh, yes. You know, go run the car track or, you know, go buy some, some food stuffs or some beverages, what yeah. have you. Uh, definitely support the track. That's oh, what yes. we're trying to do this year. Oh, yeah. yes. And speaking of uh, carts, uh, I talked to uh, Ayrton. Yes. Who will be showing up on this podcast at some point. Beautiful. Because he won, damn it. He yes, won the he drawing. Did. Yes, he did. But, um, yeah, no, uh, things are looking up for uh, the karting season out there. Beautiful. So, oh, that's good yep. to hear. So he will, he will come back. He will hit us with some details. I like it. I like uh, it. And it's hopefully is, all good news. It From what he was making it sound like, it was good news. Very good. So Very good. There we go. Excited to hear from you, Ayrton. Yep. Uh, it's going to be fun to have him here. Yeah. yeah he seems like a great guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, also, we're going to have Andrew Jackson here at some point. But Beautiful. He has, he has made it clear that he will not show up without Gavin. I'm okay with that. So it's going to be him and Gavin at some point. So that's, uh, you know. I feel like that's a logistical nightmare in and of itself. I mean, but it's, it's always a good time having Gavin on. Yep. And uh, I, I, I do quite appreciate Andrew. Yeah, he's a good dude. Andrew's so. met good people. Yep. Good yes. guys. Absolutely. Anyway. So, so mad props, boys. Yes. Mad props. I'll also talk to uh, Sarah Burgess. Ah. Happy. We actually finally made the proper introduction because I was wearing my I was wearing my cam script hat because mm. I my regular cam hat's too gross for me to wear out. Sure. Which, by the way, I need to get a different. I need to get something other than a black hat now that it's like eighty five ninety out. <laughs> I will say I've been wearing this cam hat every day at work. Yeah. And uh, the guys keep bothering me about getting industrial injection hats. Not doing it. No. No. It's sporting it. There you go. You you wear an industrial injection shirt if yeah, it comes yeah, down right. to it. I mean, I've got a hoodie, but you know it's ninety degrees outside, so yeah, yeah. not exactly. Nope. But uh, yeah, so uh, first thing she said to me is, like, "Oh, you're you're Cam. So you're the guy I talked to about coming on doing a podcast." Mm-hmm. Yes, you are. Yep. So 
Oh, wonderful Sarah. Yep, she will come on at some point. We're going to work out the logistics, and it is going to be awesome. Yeah, she's, she's got some she's got some excitement. She's got some real good energy. Oh, yeah. That'd be great to have her on. Oh, yeah. Uh, so. She she stopped by at the last drift event actually yeah that's I mean, you know got got a few shots and you know took a couple of videos I I hope she and her daughter got a couple of rides her and they Bridget, were over yeah. there yeah I didn't see um, anything but uh, yeah yeah it's it's it was a good time yeah so definitely looking forward to seeing her on here too yeah it's going to be awesome we have a laundry list of people that I want to get on mm-hmm. because it's it would be awesome but. Um, yeah. Also, little little side quest for all of you who are listening. Hit us up at mailbag at camautomag dot com. Yeah. And tell us who we why should get. you know who who you would pick, and if it's you, tell us why it should be you. Pitch yourself. Yeah. Pitch yourself. Sell sell yourself to us. Sell your wares. Pedal your wares. Pedal your wares, Gypsy. Yep. Yeah. Khajiit has wares. If you have coin, yeah. wait. Yeah, that works. Yeah. yeah, sure. Fuck it. You yeah. know. Uh, <laughs> well, I did something awesome this weekend. Yeah. Holy no. shit. What did you do? What did you do? Um, I went... Were well, you taking that away from me? On a, you never use one of these on a screw-off because you could very easily break that and then have glass in your thing. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, I mean, you're here for a good time, not for a long time, apparently. Hey, there we go. Good news. There's a report on TV with some very bad news. But uh, I went down to the uh, cash days. Nice. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. So How I, was that? It was a really good time. So I got a ride in. So I'm renting a shop from a guy I'm just going to call my boss. So I, I got a ride down in the boss's Maserati, top down. Uh, really good time going down there. Um, for those, those who don't know, it's uh, it's down in like Mount Pleasant, which is down in kind of the San Pete, Manti area. Down, down in Ricky's neck of the woods. Yeah. D- a good drive, but just really far away. Yeah. Um, and there was a, a surprising number of cars there. Like, there was probably 35, 40 cars on there racing. Yeah. And um, everything from Hondas to, like, there was, like, seven GTRs down there. Damn. But it was a really good time. I was there supporting, um, uh, I can't remember what her name right now is, but it's Laredo's wife or girlfriend. Okay. Uh, she's She's been racing. Uh, Dave's probably seen it a couple times. The, uh, like, pink RX-7 FD. Oh, Br- uh, Briley DeMarco's car. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So she was that down there racing that. Um, but yeah, and then the, the cool part was on the way back, I actually got to drive the Maserati back. And nice. I got to put some miles on and kind of get, 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 get to go kind of fast. Um, my biggest notes about the car were is, uh, that's going to be an issue to fix. Um, it's really, it's, like, it's not slow, it's just really slow shifting. Yep. It's a, it's the F1 style trans and it's, it's a single clutch, I believe is what it is. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's just dim-witted as hell. Yeah. It sounds fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> but it's like shift gear. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Would you like to go into another gear now? Yeah. Are you sure? And it was really weird, too. It was like I, I kind of I relate driving. I kind of like to driving the Tesla, where even though you don't think it, it's, a, it's a manual, it still rolls backwards. And the Tesla is due to software, but this car... Between gear, but when you're in uh, in first, it will roll backward before it engages the clutch. And so I was having to clear up a, like a pretty steep hill, you know, the, steep, the hill going up yeah. onto. And so the traffic was slow enough that it kept going in and out of first. And like it started to get kind of hot, started smelling like clutch yep. and stuff. And I was like, I'm sorry, nothing I can do about it. But yeah, Maseratis, they're cool, but weird. <laughs> and I, I kept being like, oh, I'm driving like the, the most expensive car on the road. And I would see like a mid option Titan drive passing. I'm like, nope. Nope, that's yep. that nope. thing is worth more. Yep, I mean, you can, you better. You can drive a quad mention, book about the same. Yeah, I should mention what this was. It was an O three. Um, oh, what is it? It's a. Uh, it's that's just the GT. It's just yeah, uh, the Grand spider- Turismo. Yeah, not the Grand Turismo. Nope. It's something. It's like a, it's, it is. It is the Grand Turismo, but I can't remember yeah. that. It's like the Qualiophilia. Blah blah blah. It's an, it's an M one thirty. If you want to look it up. Yeah, it's M one thirty eight Spider. All right, cool. Huh. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well then, <laughs> welcome to early two thousands Maserati. Yeah, they're weird. <laughs> yeah, yup. Uh, we any- call that budget Ferrari. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it was uh, Father's Day yesterday as we record this, so shout out to all the rad dads out there. Hell yeah! You know uh, our two rad dads, Brandon. Yes. Yep. So uh, everybody else, Ken, Austin, Jason, Derek. I'm just rifling off people I ran into at the track. Right. Because they're the first ones that are popping to my head. Uh, Chad, you know, everybody out there. Sorry if I'm forgetting you, but 
You were all awesome. Oh, fucking, fucking Andy Munch. Just <laughs> the funnest dude out at the track. Uh-huh. Because Andy doesn't seem to give a shit. Andy gives no <clears throat> fucks. Andy is it's delightful. Great. So there we go. I got a great picture of him. I was going back. Uh, <clears throat> first, uh, Air Power emptied out their garage. Oh. So, yeah. There was less is like 930. Or no, it was earlier than a 930. It was a 911S just hanging out. Oh. Yeah. Uh, there were two 356s. One raced out. The other bone stock. As it should be. Uh-huh. Uh, their newer uh, 964. Okay. GT2. That they rebuilt out of the old like Canadian weird liveried looking car. That nice. Hit the wall at oh. Daytona at like 140 miles an hour. Oh, jeez. Yep. Uh, yeah, there were just a bunch of, like, super fucking awesome things just there. But as I was going back to that, uh, here comes Andy on a scooter with a seat. Like an electric <laughs> scooter. Like you jammed a seat on a razor. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and he's just, like, whipping around. And he's just like, Moto America, putting a foot down. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man after my own heart. I'm going to uh, this guy. Uh, Andy's great. We will, I th- we'll, we'll figure out a way to get Andy. Andy we should. Here. We absolutely should. Yep. So. Oh boy. Yep. Sounds great. And I will, bo- I will learn your daughter's name, but I still enjoy calling her little Mrs. Andy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Nice. So yeah, shout out to all the rad dads out there. Uh, shout out to our friends over at Dream Tank. They got a Kickstarter going and they crossed 900 Facebook likes. Yeah. So this, that's awesome. This is good ass soap, guys. You should totally get in on that. Yeah. I've got, they gave me two bars at the, uh the two day i'm mm-hmm. using one upstairs in my my personal private bathroom yes you and should. i've got a, i really want to bring the other bar down and put it in the upstairs bathroom right there you should you have a little half bath right there by the yep. garage door yeah oh yeah that's, that's that'd be a good move. so i think we might need to do that uh yeah so uh we need to talk i need to talk to uh them because they want to support us yes so we need to figure out a way that we can uh make this work everything can be all cope aesthetic exactly mutual supporting mm-hmm. yes like marriage yep and speaking of support, uh, shout out to our buddy Tegan. Uh, unfortunately, his father, after four years of hard fight against cancer, passed. So yeah, uh, yeah. Just go ahead and just let him know that you're thinking about him. And uh, Tegan, if you're listening, man, we're here for you. Give love. All you got to do is ask, man. We'll yep. do. We'll do what we need to. And we know you're in town right now, so I will. You can always stop by. Yep. You know where we live. Yep. So we're here for you, buddy. Big love, buddy. Yep. Uh all right, moving on. Uh, no new patrons, but we got a bunch of birthdays, a bunch of fucking OGs. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of ten plus year friendships on this so list right here. So many people. All right, start laying them out. So, shout uh, happy birthday to Devin Creasy. Mm. Yep, all all the way from the Carolinas. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jenny Lou Nielsen. Oh, oh sweet Jenny Lou. JRH Performance. Go ahead and give them a follow on mm-hmm. Instagram. Yep. If you got yourself a, a truck of any sort of variety. Go ahead and hit them up. They probably got something for you. Yeah, she's got all kinds of accessories. She can get you hooked up. She's out there running parts herself. Yeah, exactly. So, there you go. Yeah, she ain't she ain't sitting in the luxury chair waiting waiting for the dollars to roll in. She's she's putting the grind to damn right grind to the axe. Yeah, she's pounding the pavement. Indeed. Yeah. Shout out to Darren Butler. Shout hey. out to Davy Jones. All right. Happy birthday, Marcy. Aw, tenders. Joshton, mm. who almost killed me once, <laughs> and you got good photos to prove it. <laughs> I hope to get his goddamn car off the tires. Yeah. Uh. Brian Titanic Panic. Yeah, buddy. That's an OG throwback. Jake the Snake Kelson. Oh, the nicknames keep going. Oh, yes. Uh, KCA, who, Christina, if you're listening, we got plenty of room for you to come down here and just be sassy. I mean, she's not listening, but she should be. Uh, You never know. You're right. People come out to Woodwork all the time and say they are listening. It is true. So, yeah, whatever. KCA, we love you. I'll bug her on the the various social medias. Come, Come be sassy. Yes. We miss that. You and your boy, come down. Just yeah. be sassy. I don't give a shit. Exactly. Yeah. It's more fun with friends. Uh, shout out to Tyler Brown. Happy birthday. Did not know you were a year younger than me. Wow, really? Yeah. I thought you guys were the same age. You'd think that. Wow. Anyway. And Brady Callister. Wow, another OG. Uh, All the way back with the, the teal DA he had. Yep. God, that's old. The greatest thing I think anybody has ever said oh, man. at just a random meet. He called a Scion XB a beer can on wheels. I mean, he's called a lot of cars beer cans on wheels, but... I just remember him shouting that across Sugarhouse Park. As do I. It was yep. a great time. It was hilarious. <laughs> it was amazing. Yep. So happy birthday to the lot of you. Merry birthmas to all. We're eating mini donuts 
in your honor. Crunch donuts. Damn right. Uh, let's that, see. That's the Cam Automatic <laughs> favorite. Yes, it if is. If you'd like to donate donuts to us, go ahead and uh, drop them off at uh, your local Cam Automatic headquarters. Yep. If you don't know where that is, you should email us. Yeah, there we go. Listen, if somebody wants to bring like a dozen Banbury Cross donuts, I'm oh, not going to say friend. no. Hell no. I mean, we'll we'll put you on the couch. I mean, shit, we might even hand you a microphone. Yeah. I think at that point, we really have to consider giving them a microphone. And yep. Depending upon what is in the dozen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's... That's going to be the thing. I mean, the assorted could go both ways. We yeah. Can, well, well, if it's whole thing, it's like like bear claws, like uh... like Banbury cross. Okay, you're in the basement, you're hanging out. But then, depending upon what you got, well, are, are we about ready to list our our dream Banbury? Like, we're going to save that for a future Thursday episode. We're gonna okay. we're gonna draft a dozen donuts. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it, 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 it should be a dozen donuts and a dozen cars. I mean, we can. That's a, that's a pretty good idea. Cars and coffee pairings. A hey. car, coffee, donuts, location. Oh God! Yeah, we're doing this. Uh, is there going to be a wild card? There, I think there's going to have to be a wild card. And then, can I fuck it up again by doing it all wrong? Yes, you can. Yeah, absolutely. I think we might have to play in two drafts: one for you, to, one for you to fuck it up, and then another where we actually do it right. <laughs> the secret draft and the real draft. It'll be like if you make two cakes for a birthday party, one for somebody to just fuck up and like eat all the decorations off of, and then you have the actual cake. Yeah, the one you actually serve. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm okay with that. There we go. All right. We all figured right. it out, guys. There we go. We've got it in the bag. Yep. And speaking of in the bag, the GT Sport Challenge is dead. We killed it. I mean, we suffocated it in the bag. Yup. You know how it says it's not for children to play around in or on? Well, uh, we, we put we put this beautiful young child called the GT Sport Challenge in the bag. He just tied and then it. And we, then we spun it around a whole bunch like a loaf of bread. And then we put the little clip on it. And we tucked the pop, the top underneath it and, and we laid we put it, it down. In a, we put, I yeah. put it in a dumpster. We just we put the kid in a dry cleaning bag in a room, and we just like, all right, we'll be back in two hours. And we never came back. We pulled a pizza, Dad. We said, "I'm going to the corner market for butter and smokes. I'll be right back." Yep. We all knew Six he was months goes back. by. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm going to tally up the, uh, the the things, who won, all that stuff. Well, so that means I actually am on the leaderboard. Yes, you are. I have a name on there. Congratulations. I guess technically I do as well. I mean, is, you is both there, there were, what, five of us anyway, so we all there was get barely, the solace of getting top five? There were barely any of us in is there. there. Is there a place for last? Because I got last no matter how we, we count the eggs. I mean, And I feel like I... Did I come in the third or fourth the only time I actually did the I challenge? Third. Okay. Yeah. So, wow. anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll figure that wow. out. So... There we go. Uh, expect that next week sometime. Cool. Later. Uh, also, again, you know, if you guys have any suggestions on what you would like to see or how you would like to play, uh, mailbag at camautomag.com. And if you say Project Cars Racing, so help me God, I will reach through my email client and strangle you with a keyboard. No. I t- so, so on Saturday, I was at the track, but then I had to leave because it is, uh, you know, it was niece's third birthday party, and it was at Wheeler <laughs> Farm. Mm-hmm. So I had to haul ass from Tooele to Wheeler Farm, and um, yeah, uh, our, our my buddy Greg, he, his house backs up to Wheeler Farm. Oh, okay. Uh, you may remember Greg. He had uh, that white STI that we featured years ago, and then oh, was red. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Greg's good people. Yeah, love, indeed. Gre- love Greg. Um, yeah, so uh, hanging out at the birthday, and uh, who do I see but uh, a stylish but short man. A go on. A pretty brunette gal, and a stumpy pupper. Oh, walking up. Uh, oh, and we know exactly who they are now. Uh, it's Greg, his girlfriend Lindsay, and their dog. Oh, little wiener pup, little pupper. Yup, and uh, yeah. So we're talking to Greg. Greg wants me to get an Xbox so he can start doing stuff with us. Beautiful. So there we go. Another vote for an Xbox. By the way, we're going to talk about this now. Somebody sent an email saying because I mentioned that I want to get an Xbox. Somebody sent an email saying that they have an Xbox. Hold on, I want, I want to read this. From a, a James Price. Hello, I was curious if you still needed an Xbox. This is new and not stolen. I thought it was cool that you did a charity last year and will like to support you in the podcast. I am not currently a patron. Please consider this my pledge. I am local in Salt Lake. Thank you. I mean, I'm I'm down to give him the pass. And, uh, like, what's... what? Xboxes aren't, like, phones. You can't track them if they're stolen, per se. 
Yeah, no, but also I don't necessarily want to like just be receiving hot merchandise. You know, I'll receive hot merchandise and donate mine to you. All right, there we go. Okay, see, loophole found. Problem solved. All right, James, get in contact with Dave. <laughs> Sounds good. We have to do this, and you have to you have to Google stolen Xboxes in Salt Lake City to see if anything pops up. Oh, Jesus, or, and then s- if it matches, it's stolen. Well, now you see what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the closest pawn shop. I'm going to put it on the counter, and I'm going to ask to see other other Xboxes. And they're going to put other Xboxes on the counter. I'm going to say, no, I don't like any of those. And I'm going to take one of those and leave my Xbox. Or you then take it's it to, the pawn shop's problem. Take it to a pawn shop, mm-hmm. and they run the serial number, and they see if it was stolen. Or it could just be a bricked Xbox. I mean, I don't even care if it red rings a death. Do the ones red ring a death? No. no. Good. One, ones are pretty um, hardy. All right. They're... they're Quite uh, quite robust. All right, good to know. Anyway, James so, Price, hit us up, man. There we go. Let's let's make this happen. That was uh, yeah. Uh, don't take it the wrong way, James. I mean, that was a little out of the blue and kind of you know. Well, per- I mean, here's the thing. Like, I, I I don't recognize the name from anywhere. Yeah, that's. But like, I'm I'm willing to give the dude a shot here. I mean, yeah, man. We'll, we'll gladly. I mean, may, he, are we going to get a be, box full of shit? He he could like be just some like a one shit poster and be the life that sh- Camp Shenanigans needs. We don't we don't know. Yeah, man. I mean, James, uh, you know how to get a hold of us. Um, Hit us up, man. Yeah, we will. We will go ahead and figure this out. Forgive us for being a bit cagey, but you know, it's it's a little weird for somebody offering you new electronics. Man, it's 2019. Like we're still getting princes in like Persia offering you know millions of dollars in well, exchange for our credit card number. Or also so. an Xbox One, an original one. They're only worth like 150 bucks right now. Yeah. So it's it's not that huge of a stretch. No. It's but, it's a stretch, but it's not. Well, I mean, like a new like OG Xbox One though. That seems like well, I'm cool with it. Well, he like new new in box. I, I thought it, I thought it was just stated it was just like an Xbox One. No, he said it was the second sentence. This is new and not stolen. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. So that that second sentence kind of threw me off too. <laughs> you know, that's anyway. okay. Yeah. Ah, oh well. Well, you remember us talking about hats earlier. You can go ahead and get yourself a Cam Auto Mag hat over at camautoswag.com. Exactly. We've got all kinds of good stuff there. We've still got the Mount Cam More T shirt. That's always going to be there. Yep. Because it's got. Our beautiful faces on it. Yes, it does. Um, we've still got, uh, what is it, understeer to victory. Yep. It's kind of the shirt of the season. Yep. And uh, I have a feeling uh, Colonel Eddie Dean, chairman of the boards. Colonel Eddie Dean shirt's going to be put on hold because of, of things that are happening in Zach's life that we have to, uh, we got to redo. Oh, no. No, no, no. no, no. It's got to make it even better. Okay. Can, yeah. I, can I say what, what it is? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, I will be acquiring. I guess at this point, this means I just locked in that I'm definitely doing this. Thing. I had some little wiggle room to back out now, but now I guess it's yeah, solid. No, now it's on wax. You're fucked. Oh, shit, okay. It's yours now, buddy. I will be picking up a 94 Cadillac Fleetwood Bram. Yep. So. Black on black, black interior. Man. This thing is like gangster ready. You it's, know the best part about the Fleetwoods, right? Is LT1. LT1 rear wheel drive. It's, it's a Caprice. B-body. Yep. It's Caprice. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's basically, like, I've always wanted a uh, Roadmaster. This is just a non-wagon the, Roadmaster. This, yeah. this is a fancy leather, not hat, like, not wagon Roadmaster. And you have to come see it. The interior, perfect. The only thing that's bad is the radio because it caught fire. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Everything else, perfect. No tears in the seat. I mean, that's typical Delco shit. So, like, yeah. I mean, hey. Yeah, that happens. Perfect. Well, I, I think it was, like, the, like whatever high-end like the the sony i don't even know what they had back in the it was game. all made by delco was it yeah yeah okay. yeah i mean the kids probably shoved boxes of raisins and nickels in that thing for a decade so yeah. i mean well, i think it currently has like 120,000 miles on it even better yeah yep anyway so that is uh go ahead camautoswag.com get yourself some stuff wow i didn't mean to click on that but that worked yes it did <laughs> ah all right now on to some news gentlemen how much do you love the Mark II Ford Escort? I I greatly in, enjoy and meh. I mean, I I really like the car. They're pretty awesome. I mean, meh. especially rally trim. They were great. They're, they're a good car. Yes, and uh, you will soon be able to must point that out in England. So these are coming back. So okay, now it, information here. Um, yes. So Mark II Escort. Are they retooling this in a brand new chassis, or are they taking original cars and making them this new? It seems like they are making new old cars, kind of like how you could go to a 
like uh, who was it that was making new like sixty four and a half and up Mustang bodies and frames? Like, I I don't recall, but I do like, know that they were. I think they're using some like kit car loophole of some kind. No, I remember it was at SEMA. Like Ford blessed this. Company. It was like Suncor or something. Interesting. Yeah, like you could buy like basically enough of a sixty four and a half Mustang to then make a new, you know. Huh. So, yeah. So I think that is I, kind I wonder. Of, uh, there's lots of legal yeah, there's a issues lot of, with that. Yes, there's but. a lot of... Oh, yeah. No, there's a lot of moving parts here. But, so, uh, yes, you will be able to buy one of these. They're being billed as Group 4 rally cars. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I mean, it's... Uh, yes, they've got a rolling chassis already built. It's sitting in a workshop right now. It's awaiting a powertrain. That powertrain being a... Two and a half liter Duratec Ford engine with uh, individual throttle bodies, and it's backed by a six speed Mazda gearbox. So this is essentially a beefed up NC Miata drivetrain. Basically, yeah, I like it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's going to come fitted, you know, with a roll cage, rally ready axles. You know, as soon as you get it, you'll be able to go. Build Beautiful. Build. Yeah. And they are going for. <laughs> it's going to take a while for them to come out. By the way. Uh, the first prototype is at least six months away from completion. Right. So they're not. You won't be able to take orders. By the way, the people who are doing this are uh, where did, where did I put it? It's over here. Uh, Great British Sports Cars and Motorsports Tools are going to be building these new Rally Spec Mark II Escorts. Okay, that's really cool. I I actually would like to see how many of these they're going to build. Yeah. And maybe in the chance that I become independently wealthy in the next couple of years, that would be something that I'd like to have in my garage. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're going to be starting at around uh, 60,000 pounds. So That's probably a little over a hundred grand here. Something like that, yeah. I mean, if they're even able to be used here. I feel like with I such have. low production numbers, we could probably get one here. Oh, easily. And I imagine some rich guy probably already has it figured out. Yep. So there we go. Uh, moving on to other off-road fun. Guys... We all know that the uh, the Uranus from Lamborghini is a thing, <laughs> but guess what? Hold on. I need to pull something up. Okay, you go ahead and do that. I'm going to keep going. You just go ahead and... Wow. You go ahead and jump on this. Um, yes, there is a better off-road Lamborghini that may actually get built. The Huracan Storado, which you have seen pictures of it. It is a Huracan... That is slightly lifted, has like it, it's got kind of the off road treatment on it. It's it's a Huracan with bushwhackers, yeah, and like ground clearance, yeah, on light pods, yeah. Like this looks like something a famous YouTuber would do to try and piss everybody off and end up selling a bunch of copies, yeah. Except this is going to be a thing that Lamborghini might actually make. Uh, let's see, the quote here is uh, let's see, where does it start? Uh, Let's see. For this purpose, we developed a lightweight synthetic material, which is in its final shape, bolted or screwed over or onto the finished body. The idea for this car was born here in Nardo, where we have both worlds next to each other. While the Urus is clearly more SUV than sports car, the Storado is a Huracan with the abilities of a crossover. Fuori strada. Okay. Do you remember that? No. When we were talking about the, the Urus off-road racing? Oh, yeah, that. There we go. It's going to be the the the, the Huracan Furistrada. racing series. All right. Uh, by the way, that quote was from Mauricio Reggiani. He is what is he? What is his title? Uh, the chief technical officer at Lamborghini. So the rumor is uh, it's going to be two hundred forty thousand euros, which is about two hundred seventy grand at the current exchange rates. They're going to be between five hundred and a thousand of them. Hmm. Yep. Like. I, like as as the off roader here, I like it, but that those colors are horrendous. Oh yeah, no, it's. I mean, it's not it's not great as it is, but the, I mean, this is an absolute novelty and yeah. nothing more. Oh, yeah. and the sad thing is, these cars won't ever get used. Like we'll we'll have the one YouTube video of like John Olson ramming one up a fucking ski hill, and that will be it. Yep. So I mean, there's going to be like the guys from Tax the Rich or something like that that are just going to be doing donuts in one. Holy yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's going it's going to be interesting, but it's not. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not going to see much of them getting used. But oh well, that, and that's okay. Yeah, so long as it's it exists, I'm happy. I think someone's, at least someone's thinking about it. Oh yes, and moving on 
news. Good news. There's a report on TV with some very bad news. Oh, God, I know what that means. Ah, oh. uh, yes. That means Tesla's in the news. Yep, Tesla and Uber. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, that's a double whammy right oh, there. Oh, right. Uh, let's see. They both applied for relief from tariffs that our government is imposing upon Chinese-made goods. And they were denied. Ow. Yes. Wait, hold on. Yup. Uh, Uber for uh, electric bikes that you can rent through their app. And uh, Tesla for the, quote, brain and center screen of the Model 3. The second one seems kind of like bullshit. Like, really? Why are you, you going to put tariffs on that? Uh, because they're going to put tariffs on every fucking thing. That's I, a... I, it's, I shouldn't. <laughs> it's politics, politics, politics. We're done, right? Uh, pretty much. I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah, they both applied. You know, they had their, they they went there and they're just like, well, I mean, you know, we'll be at a competitive disadvantage compared to whomever. And then the government was just like, you thought. Good news. Yep. So <laughs> there you go. Both were denied relief from the tariffs. I mean, ah. They are just what? bitches. What? Yep. And then, next one. Oh, yeah. Uh, BMW still making a V12. Well, I mean, of course they are because they're in some pretty cool cars yeah so the i mean uh it's the n74 which is a twin turbo v12 mm-hmm. uh yeah you can still buy a 7 series with a v12 right it's the 760i yeah I had no idea that was still going on yeah, neither did i i mean <sighs> nobody I mean, around here is dumb enough to buy a 760i yeah for the money you could definitely get a much cooler amg oh yeah oh hell yeah oh yeah but um I mean, that, that V12 is also in the Rolls-Royce Ghost, Wraith, and Dawn. Oh, okay. Well, for that price, you, you could get a, an, S65, or an S65 and maintain it. There you go. It's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, according to BMW, or according to a report that Top Gear posted earlier this year, uh, the engine's going to be safe until about 2023, but after that, it's probably going to be dead. Right. Aww. I just saw that today, and I just kind of wanted to mention it. Well, that's, and that's means, okay. That yeah. might be one of the last V12s. Yeah. I mean, it's that might be the last V12. They're going away because um, Mercedes is done. Um, I guess one of the people who's still making one is Pugani and AMG. And yeah, I, and AMG's. I, I don't think yeah. Jaguar's done. Yeah, Jag- 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 Jaguar hasn't made a V12 in years. No, yeah. they've they've really stepped their game up on the V8s. Um, Toyota hasn't done a V12 anymore. No, a V12 for a while. Century hasn't had a V12 for a while. But yeah. I'm, just, I'm thinking of the people who have V12s. I don't think there's anything else out there. Yeah, I, I, I guess right. I guess I think the last V12 we might have is going to be a W12. That's not a V12 though. I know, but it's the <laughs> thing we're going to get it's though. Twelve cylinder engine. Hmm. Well, there we go, folks. And it's only going to be in. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. Wow. There's the news. Moving on, we're going to talk about racing. But first, it is Monday, so I'm wearing my Depresso tee. As you should. From Steady Broke Clothing. I wore my Depresso t-shirt on Friday at work. Got a lot of cause. No, you got to start wearing the Broke AF shirt on payday. Yeah. Really throw that curveball at people. That'll be my Wednesday shirt. There you go. I get paid on Wednesdays. Nice. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, so you can go over to SteadyBroke.com uh, and check out all of the good stuff they've got on their store. Uh, I think the most expensive item is their sweatshirt. And it's yeah. like thirty-five bucks. Yeah, it's something like that. But hoodie, it's, yes. Yeah, it's hoodie, but it's the middle of June, so you're not looking at a. Hoodie. You're not. You're not going to buy that. But they've got a grip of short sleeve shirts. They've got hats. Yeah. Uh, tank tops. Still got the crop top. Yep. Show exactly. Off. Show uh, off that beer belly, fellas. <laughs> and ladies as well. I believe they have ladies wear. Oh yes, they do. Of but course. The crop top is definitely a lady shirt. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm not going to kink shame. Nope. Deliver it. It's Pride Month. Live your truth. I mean, hey, do Be what you got to do, bud. You, you, go. you put your hamburger meat away, Zach. I'm, 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 I'm done with you. <laughs> Anywho, if you guys are also sick of Zach's hamburger meat, <laughs> uh, you should definitely go pick up some good stuff over at Steady Broke, right? Yep. And then, as if the incredibly enticing cheap right. prices were not good enough for you, we've made it one better. Yep. In the coupon code box at checkout, if you type in CAMAUTO15, get 15% off the entire order. Oh, yes. Just because you're broke doesn't mean you can't live your dreams. Steadybroke.com, steady.broke on all social media. Get some, bitches. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not as good as you. I'm not good enough. Wow. Wow. Too much. Just, just, just. just it's just, horrifying. I, 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 I'm blind. I'm, I have been blinded. All right. Don't. Don't by the light. I could see that out of the corner of my eye, and I did not like that at all. I do with my shirt on. Why do you take your shirt off? Because he's willing to escalate this to an uncomfortable place. Just do it! Don't you, God. 
I didn't know you could pull your nipple out of your shirt like that. That was actually entertaining. <laughs> uh, you know what else was entertaining? No, not that. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> well, don't worry. You Get get your finger on the, the loud one, because we're going to be getting into some shit in a minute. But no, Lamar was this weekend. Hey. Yeah, don't worry. We'll get, we'll get to have we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. No, but Lamar was this weekend. Uh, yeah. Toyota controversially defeated Toyota. Wait, there what? was there was no other like manufacturer backed, you know, LMP one team anymore. Oh, so yeah, I mean, it's just Toyota versus like privateer LMP one efforts. Oh, so but they're never going to be able to match the fact that Toyota can sink a shit ton of money into this thing. Right. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so the number eight car won after the number seven car came in for a puncture and they replaced the wrong tire because it had a faulty sensor that told them the wrong tire was punctured. Oh, oh lovely. Yep. That's great. Yep. Uh, the number eight cars won. Fernando Alonso was in and he did not like the fact that he won that way. He felt like he didn't deserve the win. Okay. I mean, that's quite sportsmanlike. Yeah. And as a guy who has had like victories taken away from him because of things like that. I think he's definitely one to, uh, you know, sympathize. Right. Yep. Anyway, uh, let's see. Ferrari took the win in GTE Pro. It was the AF Corsa car. Uh, it was the 70th anniversary of Ferrari's first win at Le Mans. Oh. So very interesting. So that is nice. Yep. Um, yeah, Ford uh, did all right, uh, except uh, one, of their car, one of the GTE Pro cars got disqualified. Oh, no. Yes. Uh, and then... Everything was looking awesome. The Keating Motorsports GTE AM Ford GT, the first privateer Ford GT in competition anywhere, right? took the win in GTE AM. Okay. For a minute. Oh, no. Yes. The goddamn French took the win away. Why? The, because it was, let me pull up the story here. Uh, they were looking at it for a couple of different things. Uh, the fuel tank was 0.03 of a gallon too big on the GTE Pro car. So they thought the same thing was happening with the GTE AM car. But uh, no. What happened was they hit the car with a 55.2 second penalty. After mid-race, they forced the car to come in to replace the nose. After the car had already spent a lengthy amount of time in the pits, getting the nose taped up after some front-end damage. Interesting. The nose was fine. Headlights were working. Everything was okay. But then the ACO just said, no, 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 no. Bring it in. Put on a new nose. Really? So, yep. Trying to trying to fucking take our win away. Assholes. Yes, but no. It was uh, the. There is a minimum reference or minimum refueling time for the GTE uh, AM cars, which is a kind of built-in safety feature because they don't want you going out there like a jackass with just a giant hose trying to dump fuel into a car on a very hot pit lane. Uh Mm -hmm. Bad things happen. That's why we don't have refueling in F1. Got it. So there are, you know, things in the fueling rig that slow the fuel down, so everybody has about the same fueling time. Right. Yeah. So for the GTE AM cars, it's 45 seconds. Their average fueling time was 44.4 seconds. So what? I think it's about time we show the French how we revolt. It's fucking hell. They stole our playbook early on, and now they're doing us dirty like this? I'm sorry you enjoy democracy, France. Newcomb, get them before they get you. Yeah, so that 55.2 seconds is they took the point seconds, point six seconds infraction from all of the 23 refueling stops the car did, added them up, and threw them on the car. Ouch. They won by 44.9 seconds despite the ACO trying to fuck them over mid-race. So now the number 56 uh, Team Project 1 Porsche, or whatever the fuck its dumbass name is, uh, took the win by 10.3 seconds. Because of a bunch of penalties. Yes. Yep. So, fuck you, France. Death to the FIA and the ACO. Yep. This is some bullshit. Mm-hmm. So, Sounds like we need to take it back to the old school. Well, so... Uh, Here's the thing. So you know what we've been talking about the the hypercar oh. rule set, right? And and they're padiddling around and fiddle fucking with it caused Ford to just up and leave. Yeah, Ford and a bunch of other people were like, "Well, you don't have anything, right? You can't say you have something and then just like fucking waffle, right?" So 
But no, on Friday, they announced the rules are final. They're going into effect. Okay, so now here, here's another thing. I, I think that the ACO's fucking with Ford specifically. Oh, God, yeah. Because of this GT shit and the fact that they waited until Ford and a few other people just up and left saying, fuck you guys, I'm going home, to finalize these hypersport rules. Well, and here's the thing. This shit was dead on the vine. They right. were going to have to come hat in hand to IMSA and write a unified, you know, new top class rule set. Mm-hmm. Because IMSA, you know, they don't have a dance partner now for this, so there's going to be the DPI 2.0 rules, but we'll get to that in a minute. Right. Um, but no, so this thing was dead in the fucking water. Right. But then Toyota and Aston Martin said, oh, yeah, sure, we'll do this. And we've had, you know, noted large manufacturer Cameron Glickenhaus saying that we're gonna he wants to do a car. You know, wow. And by Collis, who, if you follow European sports car racing, you know who the hell they are. You listening to this, you probably have no idea who the fuck by Collis is, but they are a French manufacturer. They usually build LMP2 cars. Interesting. Yeah, they want to do one of these things. So the ACO and the FI, they're like, we got four. Let's do this. I did a great race, though. I mean, it, it could be very interesting, but it could also just be. Toyota and Aston Martin beating up on Cameron Glickenhaus and by Collis. So, like, I was getting excited for, like, seeing, like, McLaren and Ford doing this. Yeah, and Ferrari and all these yeah. other people. But now it's just like, okay, cool. And the thing is, like, it's not great that it doesn't have a strong backing from the get-go. Because if it did have a strong from the get-go, it would take off. Yeah. Well, but now so- it's like... Well, so it originally started like, oh, yeah, these are going to be like production-based hypercar things. But now the class is open to hypercar-based racers as well as specialized prototypes. So basically you're allowing prototype, like, yeah. you know. LMP cars, basically. Yeah, sort of. Uh, so they lowered the weight to 1,100 kilograms. They upped the power to 750 kilograms. Uh, they saw the mandatory hybrid system, but it's not to exceed 270 brake horsepower. They're going to have a... So, so these cars have two thousand and twenty horsepower, basically. Basically, yeah. So uh, they will have a balance of performance because we all love that and the arbitrary way in which that is handed out. Whack. Yup. Uh, but the prototypes can have a quote unquote bespoke engine. So you know, a thing that only exists unto them. Interesting. So, which is cool, but like, it's yeah, it's cool, but we kind of already fucking have that. Yeah. Like, why? You know, why not impose a hard price cap at that point? Well, I don't like hard price caps. I mean, it's... Uh, I, I do, but I don't. Like, I see the benefit of them, but I'm also like... Then you look back at like the glory days of B... Or not B1. <laughs> at um, at uh, Group B, there wasn't really a price cap for Group B, and we, we got no. the craziest shit out of it. Yeah, and teams spent themselves out of existence, just yeah. like they did in the World Sports Car Championship. Because yeah. you had, like, Aston Martin, Jaguar... And Mazda and Nissan, you know, and Mercedes battling it out with each other. But then two years later, they're like, why the fuck am I spending three times the amount as I would in F1 to go yeah. contest this? So, Which, well, like, yeah, like I said, like, like I see the benefit and the, the negative of having price caps. Yeah, I am. Because it keeps, keeps the buried entry low. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those. Okay, you can't outspend everybody, which is a problem for some people, but that means you have more, you know, you, you got more bullets in the chamber. I would be really interested to see how, like, look into, like, how the spending breaks down for some of these teams. Like, 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 like is it spending on the car or is it spending on the team? Like, It's always on the car. Like, so, but, but you could spend a billion trillion dollars on having the best fucking team. I mean, in theory, like, you have a total budget. Mm. So, like, that's all in there. So, like, you know. Interesting. Yeah, so, like, you can't just, like, spend, you know, you can't spend however much on the cars themselves and engineering and developing them and then spend twice as much on, you know, the race day engineering. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah, so Aston's going to be out there in a Valkyrie. Uh, Toyota is currently already testing their car. Do you have photos of it? We have a little, a little gif of it. Yep. Uh, you've kind of already seen this thing. It's, hey, look, the front kind of looks like a La Ferrari. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, yeah, they're, they're Gazoo Racing Super Sport thingamajigger. 
Yeah, it's been out there. Yeah, the GR Super Sports concept. Like, it's already been seen. Yeah. They've shown this thing off a, for a couple of years now, so. This is kind of like the, the fucking GTR road car weird thing from Nissan they only made two of. Yeah, that thing. I don't even know. What was it called? It was remember, like a GT1 yeah. car, basically. Yeah, that, it, it was their GT1 entry. Yeah. Which was another thing that, hey, man, that those days were awesome, but, you know, teams spent themselves out of the championship. But then I look at the back side, like, look at the cars we got out of the, 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 like, some of the greatest cars we have now from that era came out of the GT1 era. No, some of the greatest cars that you have seen a picture of came out of that. They're, but not, like, yeah, no. Right. Yeah, um, no, like, the no, the cars that we all love. From that like, era. They came from touring car. Yeah. They came from touring car and low-level sports car racing. No, no, no. Like, this top-tier shit, it's nice. Like, it's a thing to, for people to hang their hat on. Yeah. You know, it's for us to, you know, collectively give ourselves a Dutch rudder to. It, it, it's but, the, the poster car. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, no, like, we're, we're never going to see any of those cars. No. No, not... It'll be a cold day in hell before we see some of those things that were actually contending for the title. I, I'm still giving my, I'm still giving myself a chance to see a, a, a AMG GTR one. Yeah, I mean there are, there are a shocking GT1. amount of those. Yeah, there is shocking well, amount of those. I think it's 53 in total. Yeah, well, I mean compared to like the two Nissans or the one Toyota GT1. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, but then there's I think I, I won't be wrong on this. I'm gonna get yelled at in the comments. Um, I think there's a, like 103 all said and done of McLaren F1s. Something like that, yeah. I think, yeah. I don't know. Whatever. I also think that's, I also think that's like Ferrari. The numbers kind of change sometimes. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, it's, yeah. Uh, anyway, so moving on. Uh, yeah, IMSA is, they're left alone to write the uh, the DPI 2.0 rules. So they're going to continue on with the DPI formula, but they're just going to evolve it. And it sucks because... You know, months ago when the hypercars were looking dead in the water, you know, it looked like we were going to finally have, for the first time in decades, a global unified, like, top tier sports car champion. But that didn't happen. So here we are. It's going to be, you know, a lot that you currently know and love because the DPI cars, they're pretty fucking badass. You know? Yeah. When all. All said and done, they're really they are really awesome cars. They are better than an LMP2 car, but they weren't quite LMP1. So that was kind of where they faltered in the original mm-hmm. bit of the formula. But yeah, uh, they're going something for us by the end of the year. They, mm. you know, Scott Atherton has said ACO and the FIA have done you know with this oh yes we're going to have new rules and then not have a deadline so they can't be want rules we kind of need to know what we're getting ourselves into Mm -hmm. so they're like yes end of the year december 31st 2019 is our deadline to have believe that there will be these rules Hmm. and this is also going to be a bit more attractive because you know the hypercar rules are cheaper than the current lmp1 budget but cheap no. Oh, God, no. So, yeah, you can come and play in IMSA with a production-based engine and then go ahead and have somebody design you a chassis around that car, or at least cheaper than what you would do in the FIA, the World Endurance Championship. Interesting. And then you also wouldn't have FIA bullshit on every fucking race you do. No, you'd have IMSA bullshit. <laughs> Story for it. That's a thing that they have been talking about doing for a while now. Right. Uh, all signs point to quite like how it was with the, uh, the LMP1 hybrids, but mm. it is going to be noticeable. It's going to be, uh, yeah. Mm. It's going to be a something. I think I think IMSA is going to be the one to watch, mm-hmm. but, I mean, when it's just Aston Martin and Toyota versus that Aston Martin and Toyota have. Right. Like, how much a decent background in this top-tier thing. Aston Martin's making the jump up from, you know, the... Hmm. Well, hot damn. Yeah, wow, we did that perfect. Perfect timing. Ain't that the... No rules. They will be taking effect for the 2022 season, so... Okay, so we got three more years of... All right, guys. Well, there we go. Episode 201 in the bag. Yeet. I thought you were just going to do all of those. Back on Thursday with episode 202, where we're going to be talking about uh, automotive what-ifs. Oh. And I think it's slapping a small child. Cool. That's going to be fun. It is. All right. Yeah, hear about uh, what-ifs and Zach beating up kids... On episode 202 this Thursday. Yeah. 
Follow us on all the social medias. We're at Cam Automag on everything. Support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Cam Automag. Mm-hmm. Like, rate, review, subscribe to this podcast anywhere you get your podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play. You know, you know the drill. Yep. So there we go. For episode 201, I have been Mike. My name Dave. You legitimately fucking stole that from me. <laughs> wow. Yeah.